The land explored by our ancestors extends from Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. Its leader is a true citizen of the world. He believes, without a deep understanding of the past, there is no future. Each journey is focused on a detailed study of history and culture. Pilgrim of the 21st century, Zapari Skakov, with a team of scientists, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. In previous episodes, we talked about the trip of the Trails of Nomads scientific expedition to Torgai. The Uli Zhilanshik River flowing in the region originates in Uli town. As you remember, the word Uli means great, and the river was named so for a reason. This means that both the river and the mountain, which the Kazakhs treated with great respect and trepidation, speak of the importance of this region. We know from history that Uli town is the place where the Khans were proclaimed and three Kazakh Jews were united. Already, these facts speak volumes. It is quite understandable why Uli was awarded such an honorary right. After all, the worldview of the Kazakhs' ancestors was associated with nature and its phenomena. Ulitao, the very pronunciation of this word reflects connection with Tengri, that is, with the sky. People climbed to the highest peak of the mountain and thus approached God. This mountain seems to connect the land and the sky. Now, there are many who would like to get closer to the sky, in particular climb Auliatau. This is the highest peak of Auliatau, located at an altitude of 1,130 meters above sea level. And if you go up the mountain on foot, the distance is about 2 kilometers. Not to say very high and close to the sky. But this mountain, as they say, was chosen by the god Tengri himself. There is a legend about it, modern scientists say. One of our famous scientists, Victor Seibert, researched this place in 2011 and came to the following conclusion. In the Bronze Age, 3,000 years ago, the tribes living on the territory of Saryarka needed some holy place of worship, for example, like Jerusalem or Mecca. Of course, they had small holy places, but they needed one common place. It had to meet three prerequisites, but I could not find such a place that meets all three conditions. But this place is quite suitable. Climb Aulita Tau, you can see an amazing miracle of nature, birches that grow on stones. There is one legend among the people. They say that in this mountain, in the holy cave, the legendary steppe prophet and founder of Zoroastrianism, Zarathustra, received a sign and embarked on the true path. The famous historian and archaeologist Victor Zybert called this place a spiritual center. The scientist gave three specific reasons why. Firstly, land of the living located in the village, that is a settlement of sedentary people, was found here. There is the source of the mountain river. On its bank there is a world of spirits, a large mound. It is on this side of the bank. After death, a person was carried across the river, cleansed from worldly sins and buried in the world of spirits. And there is the third feature. This is the Mount Auliatau the world of the gods. There are frequent gravestones on the mountain. One of them has inscriptions Asan Kaige. He lived in the 14th-15th centuries. The legend says the following about the sage. Uli Tau is the heavenly place of Jeruik, where the famous camel of Asan Kaige Jelmai stopped. And according to the same legend, Asan Kaige was buried on the Uli Tau peak. There is also a version that the priest was buried in the Jati Aulia burial ground in the Kislarda region. This situation is explained by the catchphrase of the Kazakhs, great people are born in one place and die in thousands. And according to Victor Zybert's assumptions, not everyone could climb the top of Aulia town. 
Saints and prophets pass from the world of spirits to the world of gods. They must go through water that is even cleaner than a mountain river. This water is located between the worlds of spirits and gods. This is the holy water of the Imbolak Spring. If the area has these three features, then the land is considered holy, the scientist said. Another significant site of the ancient civilization is the Terekti Aulie archaeological complex. It is located near the village of Terekti, which is located on the banks of the Sarisu River. There are many ancient settlements, burial grounds, and petroglyphs on the territory of the complex. There are approximately 300 rock paintings. Mostly, there are images of animals, especially horses. The first people to tame this wild animal were the ancestors of modern Kazakhs. This is a very interesting tourist attraction, especially a lot of people come here in summer. Of course, we must protect, develop and promote such places. This is our history. And although it was not written down on paper, it was imprinted on stone by our ancestors. There are, of course, other places with these animal-style drawings, but the drawing of a praying person is only here. This is the peculiarity of the place. Traces of feet, knees, nose and forehead depicted in the direction of the Kaaba are signs of a praying Muslim. Nearby, there are prints similar to those of horses' hooves. The scientist Al-Biruni, who lived in the 10th-11th centuries, wrote about these amazing stone miracles. He believed that this work was associated with a horse Duldul of the son-in-law of the Prophet Muhammad, the fourth Caliph, Hazrat Ali. And this gives reason to believe that at that time, along with Islam, the heroic deeds of the legendary person were spread. A horse, who was also considered a saint, was greatly respected. The Kazakh butters went to the battles with the cry of the name Hazrat Ali. Well, once fighting on the path of Islam, wounded and tired, he fell down near a stone. Tormenting and suffering, Ali prepared to meet death on this stone. But in the morning, when he woke up, he saw that all the wounds had been healed. This is the help of the Almighty, he thought. Thus, he called this place Terakti Aulia, which means holy poplar, because a lonely poplar grew there. The man who changed the course of history in Eurasia, the commander Emir Timur, left his mark, a monument on the top of Altin Shoki in Ulitao. In 1935, scientist Kwanish Satpaev discovered a stone with an inscription. The following words were engraved on it. I am Bek of Turan Temer Bek, who in 792 Anno Hegere, in the year of the sheep, on the 21st day of the midsummer month, went on a campaign against the Han of Golden Horde, Toktamis, and left this message to the descendants. May the Almighty give us good luck. <laughs> After this campaign, the Golden Horde started disintegrating. It was split into several Khanates. Among these Khanates, the Kazakh Khanate, as well as the Crimean, Kazan, Siberian, Astrakhan Khanates, Blue Horde and White Horde later appeared. Consequently, Russia annexed all these parts of the disintegrated Horde, one by one, to itself. The stone on which the words of Emir Timur were inscribed is now stored in a neighboring state. It has been kept in the Hermitage since its discovery. 600 years later, in 1991, a copy was delivered to Altin Shoki. Ancient Arabic and Uyghur languages were used on this inscription. It is very similar to the Kazakh language. However, Altin Shoki still has many secrets, in particular the period and assumptions associated with the campaigns of Emir Timur require more thorough research. Why did Timur the Lame attack Toktamis? 
Perhaps it was the policy of the European rulers. For example, we remember Plano, Carpini and Rubruck as travelers, but in reality they were real spies, diplomats. They even visited the distant Karagorib and agreed with the Mongols on a joint attack on Jerusalem and made an attempt to destroy the Islamic states. That is why Kedbuga attacked Jerusalem and then our ancestor Baybaris repulsed the Crusaders and the Mongols. One of the largest states, Uli Uli, or the Great State, has emerged on the immense Deshti Kipchak land. Later it was called Golden Horde. It is described so in the Slavic, Russian and Western chronicles. The Golden Horde history was started precisely in Ulitao, since the headquarters of the leader of the Ulis, Jochi Han, was there. It was located presumably on the banks of the Kara Kengir River. This version is proved by an archaeological monument, the Mausoleum of Jochi Khan. This blue doomed mausoleum is the only monument left from the dynasty of the world ruler Genghis Khan. Oriental architecture and construction speaks of the spread of Islam during the period of Jochi Khan. He named one of his sons Muhammad. No wonder. Look at the architecture, it looks like a mausoleum of Hoja Ahmed Yassawi, but smaller. In my opinion, ahead of its construction, they invited masters from Turkestan. A mosaic was applied on the front portal and on top. At that time, mosaics in construction were found in Samarkand, Hiva and Bukhara. It is believed that two people are buried in the mausoleum, Jochi Khan and his wife. Academician Alki Margolan thinks so because in 1946 archaeological excavations were carried out in the mausoleum. During the work, the remains of a middle-aged man without one arm were found. This fact seems to confirm the legend of a man who was bitten by a lame kulan. The bones of a wild animal were also removed from the grave. This is also confirmed by historical information Alki Margolan believes. In addition, a camel skull, material and a flag were found. The research with the use of the latest technologies continues in this monument. This is a real burial complex, since 24 more burials dating back to the period of the state of Uli Ulus were discovered here. Ahead is the study of Jochi Horde and city of Orda Bazar, which previously existed here. <laughs> We can say that he is the great-grandfather of the Kazakhans because after Jochi Khan, his sons, grandchildren and great-grandchildren were all Khans. At that time, those Khans who were descendants of Genghis Khan were respected. And if you were not his descendant, then you were only given the title of Sultan and in the south, only the title of Emir. If you walk along the Kara Kenga River, about 30 kilometers away, there is a mausoleum of Alashah Khan. Before entering the mausoleum, it is important to pay attention to the tombstone. One says that this is a monument of the 11th, 12th centuries. The second one has signs of three Jews. That is, the structure was built in the era of Deshti Kipchak, and the ancestor of the Kazakhs Alashah Khan rests there. But this story is also blurred. There are many versions and preconditions for them. According to one of them, Allah Shahan was also called Abul Jahan, Allah Shahan, Alin Shahan, Kerei Khan, Janabek Khan, Ahmed Khan, Kaunazar Khan, and even Genghis Khan. However, this mausoleum was probably built in honor of all the Khans symbolically. In addition, according to legend, there was an ancient burial here. There is a staircase leading to the top of the building for Azanshe, people who call to prayer. This is the place where Alasha Khan was buried. As we can see besides him, there are places for three more people. Everything else appeared later. These are dirty bricks. These are fresh ones that came later. But these bricks were still in those ancient times.
This mausoleum, like the Mausoleum of Jochi Khan, is made in an oriental architectural style. This is evidenced by the portal, dome, and patterns made by weaving of red bricks. Based on such similarities and other historical data, we can say that these two objects were built in the same century. Given the Arabic script on the stone found in the Mausoleum of Alacha Khan, scientists believe that the construction time of this object falls on the period of Islam spread in the Kazakh steppe. This was approximately during the reign of Berke Khan. This is the son of Jochi Khan, who ruled the Great Ulis. He built many religious buildings, but these are all just assumptions. So far, only architectural features can be used as evidence. <laughs> The facility was constructed in accordance with all the architectural laws. The angles and the dome were erected using wooden poles, which were used in modern reinforcement. Everything is done with high quality. This indicates on a high level of knowledge among the builders. The root of the word Kenger goes deep into history. There is even a certain connection with the Sumerian language. Any channel of this river can tell a lot of historical information. The expedition members also visited the left bank of the Kara Kenger River. There is the Dom Baul Mausoleum. The information plate says that this is a temple of the August Kipchak period of the 9th 11th centuries. However, there is also a version that the building was erected during the Huns. The burial ground is made of thin stones. Its height is more than 5 meters. The lower part is square, the upper part looks like a yurt. They are separated from each other by logs. These are elements of ancient traditions in construction. Uh, this should not be the case for the construction site. This was done earlier. If you look closely, you can see that the angle does not converge. And look, here's another corner. I cannot say that this is the 11th century. It, is, it might be 4th or 5th centuries. Its story is based on legend. This mausoleum was built in honor of Dombaul, a musician and warrior whose feats were spread widely. It turned out that he was the father of the famous commander Kedbuga, who is considered to be the author of Aksa Kulan. He was also a friend and ally of Jochi and the best shooter of his palace. According to the legend, we can assume that the mausoleum is located near the Jochi mausoleum. There are only about 7 kilometers between the two sides. However, the architecture of the object suggests a different conclusion. In America, the Mayan pyramids have such steps. Their height is 40-50 centimeters. There are such steps in the Egyptian pyramids. From this place, you can see 40 to 50 centimeters upper part. And I must also say that there are such mausoleums in Torgai. They are trimmed with stones in the same way. The exterior and the shape are the same. Mausoleums of Jochi Khan, Alasha Khan, Dombao. When we present these architectural structures as evidence, it is obvious that the urban civilization characteristic of this region originates from ancient times. And when you see the city fortress, Baskamir, you are convinced of the correctness of this assumption. The city is located on the left bank of the Jezda River, which flows into the Kengir. It dates from the 8th-12th centuries. The ancient city had a system of irrigation for fields and mines, as well as three powerful walls and the remains of a medieval palace surrounded by fortifications with towers. Scientists associate this with the complex architectural style of the Kipchaks. The city of Baskomer speaks of the high level of development of our ancestors and their worldview. <laughs> The Kazakhs were engaged not only in nomadic cattle breeding, they were engaged in various types of economic activities, including construction and trade. Urban culture appeared in the steppe in the 8th century. Olitao is called the nest of the nation. This is an undeniable fact, and this film contains only a small part of the architectural and archaeological monuments that prove it. 
there are still many more unexplored facts and undisclosed historical monuments. It is up to the descendants to do this. It is their duty. Members of the expedition Trails of Nomads continue their work to study the priceless monuments of the history of the Kazakh land. The next stop is Karkarali.